let's rewind to 1917. Einstein was working on his field equations of general relativity. These equations describe the fundamental interaction of gravitation as a result of space-time being curved by mass and energy. At that time, the prevailing belief was that the universe was static, neither expanding nor contracting. To make his equations fit a static universe, Einstein added a term called the cosmological constant, denoted by the Greek letter lambda. This cosmological constant acted as a kind of anti-gravity force to counterbalance the pull of gravity and keep the universe static. Fast forward to 1929, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe was actually expanding. Einstein promptly discarded the cosmological constant, calling it his biggest blunder. For decades, most physicists agreed, setting the cosmological constant to zero. But here's where the plot thickens. In the late 1990s, uh, astronomers discovered something astonishing. The expansion of the universe is accelerating. This unexpected acceleration implies that, that there is some mysterious force pushing galaxies apart. This was termed enter dark energy. Dark energy is thought to make up about 68% of the universe's mass energy density. And guess what? The simplest explanation for dark energy is, you guessed it, Einstein's cosmological constant. So instead of being a blunder, Einstein's lambda might actually be the key to understanding the universe's accelerated expansion. According to quantum field theory, empty space isn't really empty. It's filled with quantum fields that exhibit fluctuations in their ground state, also known as zero-point energy. These fluctuations contribute to the cosmological constant. Here's the kicker. When physicists calculate the vacuum energy from these quantum fluctuations, they get a value that's 120 orders of magnitude higher than what is observed. This enormous discrepancy is famously known as the cosmological constant problem and has been called the worst theoretical prediction in the history of physics. Did you know that the basic problem of vacuum energy producing a gravitational effect was identified as early as 1916 by Walter Nernst? Nernst predicted that this value had to be either zero or very small. In 1926, Wilhelm Lenz took this idea further. He concluded that if we considered waves of the shortest observed wavelengths around 2 x 10 11 cm and converted this radiation to material density, we would get a vacuum energy density so high that the radius of the observable universe wouldn't even reach the moon. Fast forward to the 1940s when quantum field theory was developed. The first to address the contributions of quantum fluctuations to the cosmological constant was Yakov Zeldovich in the 1960s. According to quantum mechanics, the vacuum itself should experience quantum fluctuations. In general relativity, these quantum fluctuations constitute energy that would add to the cosmological constant. However, the calculated vacuum energy density is many orders of magnitude bigger than the observed cosmological constant. Original estimates suggested a mismatch as high as 120 to 122 orders of magnitude. But modern research, taking Lorentz invariance into account, suggests the degree of mismatch is closer to 60 orders of magnitude. With the development of inflationary cosmology in the 1980s, this problem became even more significant. Cosmic inflation is driven by vacuum energy and differences in modeling vacuum energy lead to huge differences in the resulting cosmologies. If the vacuum energy were precisely zero, as was once believed, then the expansion of the universe would not accelerate as observed, according to the standard Lambda CDM model. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the cosmological constant, we encounter a variety of theoretical proposals aimed at resolving this perplexing issue. Some scientists suggest modifying gravity itself to diverge from general relativity. However, these proposals face significant challenges. Observations and experiments have shown remarkable consistency with general relativity and the LCDM model, rendering these new modifications inconsistent thus far. Moreover, some of these proposals are incomplete. They attempt to solve the new cosmological constant problem by proposing that the actual cosmological constant is exactly zero rather than a tiny number. However, they fail to address the old cosmological constant problem of why quantum fluctuations don't produce substantial vacuum energy. Despite these challenges, many physicists argue that modifying gravity remains one of the most promising routes to tackling the cosmological constant problem. 
For instance, Bill Unruh and his collaborators have suggested that when the energy density of the quantum vacuum is modeled more accurately as a fluctuating quantum field, the cosmological constant problem might not even arise. Going in a different direction, George F. R. Ellis and others have proposed that in unimodular gravity, the troublesome contributions simply do not gravitate. Recently, a fully diffeomorphism invariant action principle has been proposed, giving rise to trace-free Einstein gravity, where the cosmological constant emerges as an integration constant. Another intriguing argument, presented by Stanley Brodsky and Robert Schrock, involves light front quantization. They argue that in this framework, the quantum field theory vacuum becomes essentially trivial, leading to a prediction of zero cosmological constant in flat space-time. In 2018, a mechanism was proposed to cancel out the cosmological constant through a symmetry-breaking potential in a Lagrangian formalism. This model suggests that standard matter provides a pressure counterbalancing the action due to the cosmological constant. In 1999, Andrew Cohen, David B. Kaplan and Ann Nelson introduced the CKN bound, proposing that correlations between UV and IR cutoffs in effective quantum field theory can reduce the theoretical cosmological constant to the measured value. This was further confirmed in 2021 by Nikita Blinov and Patrick Draper through the holographic principle. Some also propose an anthropic solution, arguing that we live in a region of a vast multiverse where different regions have different vacuum energies. These arguments suggest that only regions with small vacuum energy like ours can support intelligent life. While these ideas date back to the early 1980s, they gained more credibility after the discovery of dark energy and developments in string theory. As we continue our journey into the enigmatic world of the cosmological constant, it's crucial to understand how vacuum energy has evolved over time. The calculated vacuum energy is a positive contribution to the cosmological constant because the existing vacuum has negative quantum mechanical pressure. In general relativity, negative pressure is a form of repulsion influencing the gravitational dynamics of the universe. But how do we calculate this elusive vacuum energy? Scientists sum over all known quantum mechanical fields, factoring in interactions and self-interactions between ground states. They then remove all interactions below a minimum cutoff wavelength, Acknowledging that current theories may break down at these scales, the result is a calculated vacuum energy that reflects the complex interplay of quantum fields within the vacuum state. Interestingly, the vacuum energy contribution would have been different in the early universe. For instance, prior to electroweak symmetry breaking during the quark epoch, the vacuum energy was significantly different. This historical perspective highlights how vacuum energy has been a dynamic player in the evolution of our cosmos. Renormalization in quantum field theory allows the vacuum energy to be set to any value. This process treats the cosmological constant as a fundamental physical constant, not predicted or explained by theory. However, this approach requires an extremely accurate renormalization constant due to the vast discrepancy between theoretical predictions and observational data. Many theorists view this renormalization as a temporary fix akin to ignoring the deeper problem at hand. 